Today we are making some Easter shortbread cookies. And what's special about these cookies is that the pattern is actually baked within the cookie. So you don't have to worry about decorating it because the decorating is done before they're even baked. So let's get started. So first we're gonna get some unsalted butter and we're gonna beat it with an electric mixer until it's light and fluffy. And then we're gonna add some confectioner sugar or powdered sugar and mix it in. And I feel like the reason why we're using powdered sugar instead of granulated sugar because the powdered sugar is a finer like grain so it will incorporate better into the butter. But if I'm wrong, please let me know. That's just like what I think every time I make these cookies. And then we're gonna add some vanilla extract and mix until it's all combined. Then in a separate bowl, we're gonna mix the flour and the salt. And it might seem like this recipe uses a lot of salt because it's like half a teaspoon of salt, but it's so good because it adds like a tiny bit of salt. It's not a lot, not in a way that like only people who like sweet and salty combinations will enjoy this. It's just the perfect balance. So like don't reduce this. I promise it'll make it so much better. And once everything's all together, it should just hold together when you pinch it. It's actually a very, very soft dough and it makes it so much easier for the next step, which is dyeing the dough. So we're gonna divide it in half and half we are going to dye purple. So this doesn't have to be purple, just whatever background you would like for the cookies. And then the remaining dough we're gonna divide in half again. And one of the halves is gonna be for the bunnies and part of that batch of dough, we're going to dye black and pink. That is for the bunny's eyes and for their ears. And then the remaining half are for the carrots. So two thirds we're gonna dye orange and the other third we're going to dye green. So a lot of the times you wanna chill cookie dough before you're handling it, but this time you don't because we want it to be soft because it's easier this way. So we're gonna roll out the purple dough first and I'm rolling it out onto a sheet of parchment paper. I prefer this instead of using a floured surface for this specific cookie dough because it's a lot softer and you don't want it to like rip or something when you move it around. If you find that it's sticking to the rolling pin, you could also put another sheet of parchment paper on top and just roll it between the two sheets. And for the purple or the base color dough, there's no like size that you need to roll it to just until it's like a quarter inch thick. And then we're gonna set that aside and now it's time to actually make the pattern. So I'm gonna roll out the white dough first for the bunnies. And then carefully using an offset spatula is so much easier. Let me just tell you that. So I'll link one below. It's so much easier than using your hands. I'm gonna stick the bunnies directly on to the purple sheet of dough. And I'm just kind of trying to keep in mind where I'm putting the rabbit so that like there will be enough space for the carrots to fit between them. And then I'm gonna press them down lightly just so that they adhere to the dough. And then I'm gonna use the black and pink dough to create their eyes and their ears. I'm not rolling out this dough, I'm just using like shaping it with my hands. I feel like that's probably good enough. <laughs> and then for the carrots, I didn't wanna buy one little cookie cutter just for carrots. So I have a flour cookie cutter for the green and an oval cookie cutter that I pinched at the bottom and shaped it into carrot size. So it's forever ruined, but it's also like now forever a carrot cookie cutter. And I'm just gonna stick those onto the dough as well. And then now that everything is stuck onto the dough and it looks cute, we're going to very gently put another sheet of parchment paper on top and with basically no pressure at all, just roll a rolling pin over it just to seal everything together. I didn't wanna press down too firm to squish everything out and ruin it. Maybe it wouldn't have, I don't know, but I didn't wanna take the risks. And now we're gonna get the cookie cutter that we want the cookies to be shaped in. So I use a circle or you don't have to like make any shape at all. You can just like use a knife and I cut the cookies, but keep everything on that sheet of parchment paper. Don't move them yet because once they're cut, now we are going to chill the dough. So pop the entire sheet, like slide it onto a baking sheet and pop it into your fridge for like 30 minutes. And this is going to make the dough stiffen. It gets so much easier to handle. And the reason why we're chilling it after we cut the cookies is because I found that if you cut the dough when it's cold, it can crack sometimes. So we don't want that to happen. So that's why we're doing it in this order. And, and now we are going to use our little spatula again to lift the cookies up. Look at how firm they are and easy to handle. Pop them onto your baking sheet and bake them at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for like 10 to 15 minutes. I cook mine for 15 because they're a little bit bigger until they're just starting to brown. So you don't want them to be brown, but like look at the rabbits and if you start to see the edges start to change from stark white, that's when they're ready to come out of the oven and you are done. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.